Welcome to Real Estate 360, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Tom K. Wilson, will provide you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. Now, here's your host for Real Estate 360, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back to Real Estate 360. It's nice to have you back here again. Thanks for tuning in to our Real Estate 360 program, your number one source for all of your real estate needs and education. We're broadcasting live from the number one business radio station in San Francisco area, KDOW AM 1220, the Wall Street Business Network. I'm Tom Wilson your host for the Wednesday edition of the Real Estate 360 that comes to you daily Monday through Friday at 3 p.m., along with my co-hosts, Joe Kachera and Laurie Graymont. So make sure you tune in uh, every day during the week for different guests, different uh, subject matter. We're glad to bring you uh, education content every day of the week. If you can't make the live show, you can catch our our podcast on re360radio.com and my programs on tomwilsonproperties.com. Or on iTunes. We have a great program uh, for you today with our in-studio guests, uh, Jen Hernandez and Joe Hernandez, who are a team with uh, Coldwell Banker in Saratoga, one of the highest volume and uh, uh, fast-growing uh, agencies, brokerage agencies in the Bay Area. And uh, this is a one, uh, one crazy uh, market. We're going to um, uh, talk today about uh, the timing of uh, buying and selling, how buyers and sellers should address this marketplace. And if you're a seller, what do you do to maximize your, uh, your sale? And that's a pretty interesting subject that I think is um, on the minds of a lot of people. We have a lot of folks that have been sitting on the fence, I think, for a while, trying to decide if they um, you know, should wait longer. Some have been underwater, and now they aren't underwater anymore. What's the right timing? What do you do to stage a house, et cetera? So that's going to be, uh, I think, a, a topic that interests lots of folks. And uh, we uh, would like to welcome uh, Jen, Jen Hernandez, uh, to the show. Well, welcome. Hi, Tom. Thank you for having me. Nice to have you here. Great to be here. Jen, you, um, you've been involved with Coldwell Banker now for about eight years, haven't you? I have. And you've seen some pretty interesting dynamics there in that Saratoga office. What are their... Um, as many as 200 agents in the past. and uh, That's true. When things crashed, it went down a bit, but there's now back up to, what, 140 or so, 130, something Probably like that? Probably about that, yeah. yeah. And Cobalt Banker, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone knows that brand, but you may not know what kind of volume it does in, uh, in California. California alone is what, uh, how much, Jen? How, many, how much volume in sales is Cobalt Well, Banker Northern does? California alone has over 17 billion in sales volume just in 2012. Wow. Well, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, and it's it, a lot. Uh, and um, I think nobody has to even uh, read the headlines to get a sense that uh, things are going crazy here this year, do they? Yes, it's a crazy crazy market right now. So that brings us to probably our um, one of our first questions, Jen, is uh, what are some reasons why a uh, seller should consider selling now? Well, you know, inventory is really low right now, and buyers are really, really competitive. And, um, you know, typically spring and summer are always active times in real estate because everyone wants to find a home and get settled before school starts. So, you know, buyers are out, and there's not a lot of inventory, so that drives prices higher, and people are more competitive for your home. You know, I've um, I've noticed that starting in 2008, we saw lots of headlines uh, frequently that said that, gee, the uh, banks have all these foreclosures and they're going to have to open the floodgates and let everything out. And I remember uh, Sean O'Toole, a uh, founder of and CEO of Foreclosure Radar, predicted then that that would not happen. And every quarter, year after quarter after quarter, year after year, there were still predictions. And indeed, it never happened. And I uh, I think the anybody that's waiting for floodgates to open is uh, is going to still wait a long time, but we are seeing a little bit of increase in inventory, aren't we? Yes, yes, yep. slowly but surely. Yep. And the um, so 
a seller then should consider putting uh, going on the market because why do you think? What do you think's gonna? What do you think is going to uh, happen here? Do you think uh, some people say, "Well, shoot, why should I die? It's just it's going up. Well, maybe I should just keep waiting." Oh, well, you know, interest rates are at an all-time low right now, so it's inexpensive to borrow money. So, you know, more buyers are thinking that now might be the time to make the move and become um, homeowners. You know, we don't we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if. Um, if rates are going to stay low, they, they came up a little bit. It was at three and a half percent. We're about at four right now. So, you know, if they continue to climb, it's it's not going to be as desirable as it is right now in this moment. And things, you know, sometimes slow down in, in um, fall and winter. So, again, spring and summer are always ideal times to be um, a home seller. Uh, Joe, let's bring you in on the conversation. Uh, welcome. I'm glad to have you here with us. Thank you, Tom. Um, Joe is, uh, and Jen are, have been a, a team there with CB for a long time, and uh, Joe's also uh, plays a very important role with uh, Wilson Investment Properties for the uh, past seven years, working with investors. And our next uh, program, by the way, uh, next week, uh, Joe's going to be on discussing things that he's learned from working with the investor marketplace, and that will be a, a great fact-filled session, so uh, make sure you join us for that. Uh, Joe, on the current topic here that we're discussing on uh, why a seller should go ahead and sell now, um, you uh, what's your what's your perspective on that? Why do you think they should go ahead and do that now rather than wait and hope that it's higher a year from now? Or? Well, I feel like the market has recovered substantially over the last six months. People have regained a lot of the of the losses that they took over the last few years. Rates are very important. You know, once rates start rising, people can afford less home and the prices will slow down. So you have rates going up, you have inventory rising, and the later the later you wait in this year, the the more competition you're gonna have. Over the over the winter we had a lot of we didn't have a lot of in- inventory. I'd say over the winter and the beginning of this year, we didn't have a lot of in- inventory, so we had a lot of buyers that were we had 10 or 15 buyers to every house you didn't you, if you had a nice house you had you had a lot of competition and and prices were bid up substantially and with rising inventories you're going to have more you're not going to have as many buyers for each house so you're going to have two or three people to compete against um, so i think um, this reminds me of one of my one of my favorite all-time quotes and that is um Back, I think it was in the 70s, the uh, great-grandchild of the uh, Lafitte Rothschild family, whom at one time was the wealthiest family in the world. And they were asked to what single thing he attributed his family's great wealth. And his answer was, by selling too soon. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I think that probably applies uh, very appropriately right now, as uh, you, know, you can try to hold out for that greedy last dollar and Really, maybe you should sell what what some people would consider to be too soon. But when you see an opportunity, uh, you don't know if that door is going to open again. Go uh, go grasp that opportunity and and uh, sell it. Yeah, yeah. What about buyers? What do you think buyers uh, should be? Uh, how how do they address this marketplace? Uh, well, the biggest challenge is competition. And cash is king. It's tough to compete against all cash offers. So if you're writing an offer. With a loan, all of your other terms need to be very strong. You need to have a very strong pre-approval letter. Uh, it needs to come from a reputable lender. Um, you should have short contingency periods and offer a quick close of escrow. What? Uh, how can a buyer best position themselves in this marketplace? How can they? How can they beat the odds, the uh, the competition out? How can they get themselves in a better? potential for buying a place than what the other buyers out there are doing? What's, what are some of the elements, what are some of the things they can do to help uh, improve their potential for getting a property? Well, you know, something that not a lot of people think about is they should be looking at homes that maybe other people are passing by, um, maybe a home that needs a little bit of work. If they're willing to put some of the work in, um, they might be able to find a great house. You know, a lot of people can't see past some cosmetic improvements that need to be made. So if they're willing to do those things and they can come in with a strong offer, um, there's going to be less competition. It amazes me. You know, I think 
always we know that a, a cosmetically pretty turnkey house draws more money than one that's not so pretty. Mm-hmm. And when time, when the market's really hot, I think you see a bit of a closing of that gap. So there's maybe not as quite as per, a higher percentage uh, difference because some people will reach down to something they don't really want to do. Mm-hmm. But in the long run, uh, even in, in hot times like this, it always amazes me how much better a turnkey, cosmetically up-to-date, pretty place sells over one that's technically perfectly fine but just dated. And there's yes. still there still is money to be saved or money to be earned by going for that cosmetically less pretty place, isn't it? Right. You know, I think another thing that that buyers don't really think about if you're going to be if you're competing with all cash, uh, you will if you're putting whatever you're putting down, it doesn't really matter. So you need to have strong terms. You, a lot of buyers are going with no appraisal contingencies. A lot of buyers are taking them as is or doing giving the seller two months rent back for free uh, as part of their deal. Sort of the one thing that gives buyers an advantage that people don't really think about is the kind of relationship that your buyer's agent develops with the selling agent. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have a strong buyer's agent and the selling agent wants to work with that person, that's going to, I've, I've heard of cases where they weren't necessarily the best terms, but the selling agent knew that that deal was going to get done and he didn't have to go ahead and, or they didn't have to go ahead and sell that property again. So I think that makes a big difference as well. Having a great realtor helps. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Yeah. No, I know uh, you're trying to be uh, humble here or not to uh, you know, sell yourselves in that respect um, uh, too much here on the program, but it's certainly, uh, it's certainly true. All professionals of, of any discipline are not the same. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you, you can. If you have an agent that, that's going to fax in the offer and not spend time trying to build a relationship with that selling agent, you're not going to have much of a chance of getting that property. Yeah, very, very good uh, point there, Joe, indeed. And uh, in the end, relationships are s- still make a difference. It, 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 isn't, it isn't all just numbers. It's uh, relationships. And uh, in this case, the point you brought up is that uh, a seller, if they have more than one offer, um, they often will take uh, one that's a little bit less money if they think it's a higher probability of getting a loan and, and closing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have here today with us uh, Jen and uh, Joe Hernandez with uh, Cobalt Banker in Saratoga. We're discussing how buyers and sellers should address this, uh, this hot market that we're in. And when we uh, get back, we're going to start to get into different things that a uh, seller should do to stage their home and present it for offers. So this is Tom Wilson with KDOW, 1220 AM. We'll be right back. For more information on today's program, visit re360radio.com. That's re360radio.com. For more information on today's program, visit re360radio.com. That's re360radio.com. Now, here's your host for Real Estate 360, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back. Nice to have you with us today. We're talking about a very important subject with uh, Jen and Joe Hernandez, the Hernandez team with uh, the Colbo Banker in Saratoga. And we're talking about uh, how buyers and sellers should deal with this uh, marketplace that we're in. And then we're going to get a little bit into preparing your property for sale and how to maximize the dollars and offers and so forth. So, um, so Joe and Jen, uh, let's move to another subject that's kind of critical in this uh, dynamic market where things are, uh, prices are, are moving quickly. Uh, let's talk about the uh, appraisal process because uh, everybody's heard stories about how that can kill deals. So, um so uh, talk a little bit about the uh, how appraisals affect this uh, marketplace and what one can do about it. So I think appraisals will – a lot of appraisers are having problems coming up with value, with the value that, that properties are getting bid up to because a lot of their values are, are in the rear. They're, they're based off of a, a slower market. And, and past sales. Yeah, and past yeah. sales. Comparable sales. Yeah, no. they're yeah. not looking forward. So, you if you're going to make an offer, you need to. A lot of people are going with no appraisal contingencies, 
and they're just going to come up with the difference if if it doesn't come in at value. Uh, we actually have a lender that that has a program where he has he can put a second loan and and come up and and possibly make up that difference for you. So there are different ways to go about that. We actually have his contact info if if you need it, get a hold of us. Well, I think the buyer probably what's important is they need to have a an agent who really understands that marketplace, right, and knows how to uh, knows how to address that. For example, uh, we had a project at Wilson Investment Properties uh, re- recently that sold, and we got multiple offers. And the one that we took, uh, the buyer's agent was smart enough to have that offer come in with uh, no appraisal contingency, mm-hmm. and stated right in there that if it came up short, the buyer would provide the additional funds. Yeah. Right? Yes. And, and and their agent went out to the property and met the appraiser and gave the appraiser comps and, and tried to justify the value to the appraiser, telling them why this property was different than, than the comps that they saw down the street, the amount of money that, that was put into the property. Pointed so, out all of the upgrades and... Yeah, there's all, the, there, all of the important things. There's mm-hmm. a lot of things that your agent can relay to an appraiser that can help him come to the value. By the way, we had a um, had a program recently that you might want to go check out with uh, an appraiser, and he went through the uh, different factors that affect uh, the appraised value, uh, Michael Sheldon, and it's um, appraisers can make some adjustment for market movement and for uh, finish and so forth. <laughs> But um, in a market that's as dynamic as this, sometimes they can't make quite enough. So um, they really need to really make need to make a good argument. They, uh, both both agents do, mm-hmm. and it's um, it's very it's very important to address it up front. And if the and if you have a uh, situation where uh, you think anticipate multiple offers, then I think the buyer should. Uh, Make sure that the agent's going to present an offer that says no appraisal contingency in this uh, in this kind of marketplace. And another important point is that an appraiser is giving a value to the bank. They're not telling the they they don't they're not saying what the market value is. They're basically telling the bank what what they feel the it's worth. Their opinion. Yeah, it's an opinion. So they're not the market could be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars above what they can what their opinion can be and. And it's really a crapshoot. It's tough to – that's that's the toughest thing that we have to overcome right now. One person's opinion on the value of a property. Yeah. Yep. In a truly free market, uh, we should have um, whatever price a buyer and a seller agree upon mm-hmm. is the market. But unfortunately, in, uh, in this uh, society and, and system that we're in with, uh, with controlled release of inventory – and with the uh, subsidized interest rates, uh, we don't have a we don't have a totally free market. No. So we have these uh, factors and influences that um, that alter that, and uh, can't change the system. The system's what it is. What's important is to be educated enough so you know how to uh, how to play the game. Yeah. Um, if you're playing soccer, you uh, can, and you're a striker, you can wish all day long that the goal were bigger, but it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you better learn how to deal with it like it is. Yeah. We're talking with Joe and Jen Hernandez. They're an NS team from uh, Sarah Tucker Coldwell Banker on uh, how buyers and sellers should address this market and what kind of, um, and we're going to get, and uh, when we come back from the uh, break, we're going to talk about uh, presenting your house for the marketplace and staging. We're on the uh, business, uh, Wall Street Business Network with KDOW at 1220 AM. For more information on today's program, visit re360radio.com. That's re360radio.com. For more information on today's program, visit re360radio.com. That's re360radio.com. Now, here's your host for Real Estate 360, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back. We have Joe and Jen Hernandez with us today uh, talking to us about how a buyer and seller should uh, address this uh, dynamic market that we're in and how a seller should uh, maximize their what ways they should uh, can do to maximize their value of their home. One uh, one last topic on the marketplace that um, I think we want to address before we um, before we get into that. 
is uh, how does a seller establish uh, price? You two want to talk about that for a minute? How does a, what, uh, how does a seller decide what price they should sell the house at? Well, a seller shouldn't. A realtor should help them. Realtors pull comps, which are comparable properties from the area, and use their list and sales prices as a guide. Um, obviously, we take upgrades and square footage into account. So, you know, a seller shouldn't be left alone to decide the list price of their home. They definitely need to find a realtor to help them. It's tough for a lot of sellers to do, right? Because it's a very educated marketplace. Uh, real estate's in our headlines all the time. Mm-hmm. So people think that they are experts in real estate because yeah. they read things about it. But um, it's really it's really impossible unless that is your business all day, every day in the specific marketplace that you're in, right? And right, right. It's really important to uh, work with a real estate professional that is knowledgeable about the market and is capable of marketing the home in strong ways. You someone with experience and a, a really firm grasp of the market that will really be able to guide the seller through the listing and sale of the home. And not cousin Jane, who has her license and did one sale last year. Or your right? best friend from college. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Who are in a totally <laughs> different market, who are in who are up in San Francisco and you want them to sell your house in San Jose, that just doesn't make sense. And you pick them because you want to do them a favor and they're going to give you a 1% break Mm -hmm. and yet you may lose, uh, you know, 8% in the value of your home because you didn't pick the right one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get into um, what does the seller do to maximize their situation? So uh, what are are some things the seller can do, Jen? Um, Well, you know, when you're prepping your home for sale, one of the first things you need to do is clear the clutter you need to look at your home with a fresh eye. You know, the buyer's going to notice things that you no longer see, things that you look past, cracks in the wall, maybe some clutter on the kitchen counter, uh, cobwebs, things like that. So that's that's the first thing you should do. Um, you need to remove personal photos. Buyers have a tough time picturing themselves in a home full of family photos that don't belong to them. Uh, clean your bathroom. Ideally, your bathroom should look like nobody has ever used it. Buyers don't like to think about other people using the space. So have a basket that you can you know, easily dump all of your belongings in when you know there will be a showing. And have special towels that are just for show. Um, make your beds. You're selling a dream. People want to imagine that they live in a home where beds are made every day. And uh, organize the closets. Buyers look in closets. Um, if a closet is packed full of belongings that you know, you've collected over the years, the buyer's going to think that there isn't enough storage. So pack things up. You're moving anyway. And you know, just remember that once you decide to sell your home, it, it no longer belongs to you. It belongs to the potential buyer. So pack things up because you're moving anyway. I think that's just a terrific paradigm uh, paradigm to uh, for people to think about, and most people, I'm sure, don't. In fact, it probably works the other way. People would like to think about that's still their home after mm-hmm. the new buyer is there, and um, that's that's really the. It's kind of like going for a long international trip. And uh, still thinking in your mind that you're back home, right, when yeah. uh, you should be adjusting your, your mind for where you're going. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's a really, really good point. Thanks. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, um, it's probably a tough thing for people to do, but they, uh, they start thinking in those terms, then they're going to present it more as the general marketplace wants it as opposed to how they liked it when they were living there. Yeah, try to make it a blank slate for potential buyers. Yeah, it's a product, not a home. Right. Good. Uh, very good point. Well, we have Joe and Jen Hernandez here with us today talking about uh, how uh, buyers and sellers should address the marketplace and what they should do to maximize the uh, sale of their home. And we'll be back talking about more of that and uh, also about uh, staging. So this is Tom Wilson, Real Estate 360 on KDOW 1220 AM. We'll be right back. For more information on today's program, visit RE360radio.com. That's RE360Radio.com. For more information on today's program, visit RE360Radio.com. That's RE360Radio.com. Now, here's your host for Real Estate 360, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back. we got Joe and Jen Hernandez with us uh, from Cobalt Banker, one of the uh, highest volume sales offices in the entire bay area and they uh, do a lot of volume and they have a lot of experience and they're helping us today uh, figure out uh, how a seller should best um, prepare their home and what they should do to get the maximum dollar out of this uh, dynamic market they're in so jen talk to us about uh curb appeal how important is it and uh 
what what should people do to address that? Okay, well, first impressions matter. So if a buyer is instantly turned off to your house when he pulls in the driveway, it's going to be really tough to make up for that. So there are a lot of simple things that a seller can do to burst boost curb appeal. Um, you know, if it's in within budget, they can paint. A fresh coat of neutral paint uh, will help tremendously with curb appeal. You know, don't go too bold. A light gray or taupe is um, really nice with a white trim. Gray is the easiest color for your eye to see, so it's it's a really good choice. Paint is so cheap, isn't it? It's uh, I mean, in, in this area, uh, you know, even our medium price house are six to seven hundred thousand, and and if you're uh, tight on money, you can paint it yourself. If you aren't, uh, the return on investment that's probably as good as you get, isn't it? It's cheap and it makes <laughs> a huge impact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, also take care of the front door. Paint it. Make sure it's clean and welcoming. You know, it's where buyers are going to stand when they're waiting to see your home for the first time. And sometimes they're out there for a few minutes while their realtor opens the key safe and unlocks the door. So, you know, have a nice new welcome mat and um, some cheerful flowers there. If a buyer sees that your front door is neglected, um, they're going to assume that other things are as well. So the last thing a buyer wants is a home with deferred maintenance. So I think you're telling us to uh, s- uh, start from the curb and work back and spend more money in the front yard than the back yes, yard, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, there have been so many open houses that we've been to where someone pulls up and they just drive away, and that's that's all curb appeal, right? Yeah. I don't know if I read it somewhere once or it's just my mindset, but I, uh, I've i always uh, sort of felt that 80% of the people have sort of made up their mind if they're going to make an offer by the time they get through the front door. It's probably and, true. And it's amazing how much... Uh, how much money and effort people put into uh, little details in the very back. Uh, yeah, that, that really aren't going to matter or no. have a return on investment. No. So, you know, they can also do things like get a new mailbox. Um, if, you know, if that's not even within the budget, you could spray paint your existing mailbox. You know, make sure your house numbers are visible or buy new house numbers. Um, make them, you know, make the ones that you have more appealing by spray painting them if you don't want to purchase another one. You know, pull your weeds. Don't... Um, don't have a messy yard. Mow your lawn. Make sure your yard looks its best. Buyers don't want a yard that appears to be a lot of work. Tom, you've always been a very big fan of curb appeal. What do you? <laughs> why do you feel it's so important? Well, just just I uh, my sense is that people have made up their mind by the time they get through the front door, and you uh, if you don't get them through the front door, you don't have a chance at making the sale. Yeah, if you have an ugly front yard, you probably don't have an attractive uh, kitchen or bathroom. Yep, yep. Just like. Um, yeah, just like uh, restaurants, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, walk walk inside a restaurant, and you can tell pretty much right away whether or not you want to sit down and have a meal, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a this is a big money meal you're trying to get people to sit down for. Yeah. What about staging? So you know, you can hire a stager. A realtor will be able to guide you, um, make sure that the stager is familiar with, you know your style of home and familiar with the area. But you know, there's a lot of things that a seller can do to stage their own home. Um, like we talked about before, paint is cheap. You know, if every room in the house is a different color, there's no continuity through the home. So you may want to consider all uh, painting all the rooms a neutral color. Painting every room a different color makes the house look choppy, compartmentalized, bright colors, dark colors, patterns on the wall. You know, those are all things that make the home harder for buyers to picture themselves in. So Maybe okay for a designer showcase, but most yeah. people can't picture themselves living in a house like make that. Make your mm-hmm. home a neutral palette for a buyer. Um, you might want to remove pieces of furniture, uh, place them in storage, or if you have space, put them in the garage. Um, doing this, you know, can help your home appear more open. Freestanding shelves, an extra chair or sofa, a large dresser. Removing them and arranging your furniture in a way that best shows off your room is is the best thing you can do. Um, you know, remember that your fireplace is a feature. I understand if you have children that you want to keep from playing in the fireplace. But um, when you're showing the home, remember that the fireplace is a selling point. So if you've boarded off your fireplace, remove the boarding. If you've got all of your kids' toys placed in front of the fireplace, put them in a toy box. Uh, Buyers want to picture themselves in front of it and enjoying the fireplace. So allow them to do that. A lot of people have their couch, the back of their couch, yeah. facing the fireplace. And do you, you see, do you see that? All yeah, all the do. time. Wow, isn't and that you, amazing? You really need to turn that around and make it more of a seating area, more of a feature of the room. Make mm-hmm. that the center of the home, not the television. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, add lighting. Potential buyers want to see your home, so open all the curtains and blinds and add lamps to dark corners. That's really important because, you know, a lot of buyers are turned off by houses that they feel are too dark. So buy a few extra lamps and place them in places that could use a bit of light. Probably at this stage of the game, did someone decide to sell their house, uh, it doesn't 
make sense to go putting a lot of money into uh, redoing the kitchen right. and all that sort of thing, right? If they um, if they were going to do it some time ago, then that would be a good place to put it, kitchen and baths. But uh, probably not probably not hard to get your return on your investment at this stage of the game. Yeah, and you need to enjoy it for some time. You know, yeah. you, you don't you don't want to do it just to sell it. We've all heard the stories of people that go fix up their house to sell, and then they decided that they like it enough they're not going to sell, right? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, too bad they didn't have 10 years' worth of enjoyment of that, right? Exactly. It's before in the past. Exactly. Right? exactly. Hmm. Um, you know, one more thing that's really important is, you know, you can expand your home by putting patio furniture out on the back on the back patio. It, it creates an outdoor room. Especially in good climate areas. Like exactly. We're People want to spend in, right? time outside in California. So, you know, use an outdoor rug, some throw pillows, essentially make an outdoor room. Um, this immediately expands your home and, and square footage in the buyer's eyes. So create a usable space in the backyard and buyers are going to see it as a bonus room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we haven't seen uh, too much construction for new properties in the past few years since we've had the, the crash going on. But it's... Um, Model homes, I've always thought, is a really good um, a, a good example of, of how to go stage a home. Sometimes they use more decorator colors and so forth than right. people want to picture themselves in. But uh, you usually use um, make sure they don't have very much furniture in there. They even do things like take doors off, right, so the rooms yes. look bigger. And which I which uh, I don't know. Uh, I think that may um, instill to someone that uh, you know that it's not real. But certainly you don't want to have too much furniture, too much clutter. Yes, the less okay. the better. And have, right. have your agent take you out to other houses that are already staged. No, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. Well, um, let's wrap up on that uh, note about staging and picking a stager in just a moment when we come back. This is Tom Wilson with Real Estate 360, KDOW 1220 AM. The Wall Street Business Network will be right back. For more information on today's program, Visit RE360radio.com. That's RE360radio.com. For more information on today's program, visit RE360radio.com. That's RE360radio.com. Now, here's your host for Real Estate 360, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back. It's, uh, having a wonderful program today with our in-studio guests, Joe and Jen Hernandez, who are talking about how buyers and sellers should address this marketplace and uh, what sellers should do to maximize uh, this marketplace. So uh, before the break, we were talking a little bit, Joe, you brought up the subject that uh, one thing that might help sellers is for their agent to take them around to see other properties that are well positioned for sales. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think that's pretty important thing for them to do well you got to see what the competition is you need to see how a professional is setting a prop is putting a property on the market to sell and what about um how important do you think uh, a professional stager is versus staging yourself jen what uh, what do you think you know we we like we like staged homes they're great they appeal to to uh buyers and, you know, it's not left up. To, it, it doesn't have to be left up to the seller to find a stager. Like I said, you know, a, a realtor already works with a stager, is familiar with different staging companies. So they can kind of guide you in the right direction and help you choose a stager that's right for your home. And it's, of course, important to find a stager that's familiar with the demographics of the area and familiar with your, your neighborhood and your style of home. You don't want, you know, Mediterranean furniture in an extremely modern home. So... You know, finding someone that really knows what they're doing and has experience behind them makes a difference. And again, just um, go go find an expert who can help you uh, navigate yeah. these waters and get the most for your dollar. And that's a that's a well experienced agent in that in that region. Of course. So, Jen, thanks for um, and Joe, thanks for being on with us today. You, um, so I think we've uh, covered a lot of territory here, and the uh, the importance of. Um, staging a home, of uh, getting a home with a uh, curb appeal, and to uh, and in this in this marketplace, let's go um, let's go go ahead and get something sold because as uh, as I brought up earlier before, uh, the uh, Lafitte Rothschild family said that their <laughs> uh, most important thing they ever learned was to uh, sell too soon. And a lot of people now might think they're selling too soon, but if they wait six months or a year, they may wish that they had sold too soon yeah uh-huh. might be too late don't be too greedy go mm-hmm. uh, go capitalize on a uh, on a good deal yep 
if um, folks want to have some more information about uh, um, how to stage your home, how to uh, present their home, and so forth, uh, I think you've uh, written up some notes on that uh, topic. And uh, if somebody wants to get hold of that, how do they uh, how do they reach you, uh, Jen? Check out our website www.jenandjoesellhomes.com. All of our contact info is there, and there's a ton of great information on the website as well. So feel free to check it out. Great. Thanks, uh, both of you, for being with us today. Next uh, next week, we're going to have um, Joe Hernandez be back with us. Uh, Joe's been an um, integral part of Wilson Investment Properties for seven years and has uh, serviced and supported and helped uh, investors find uh, long-term rentals that uh, create portfolios for them to help retire with. And he's going to uh, talk to us about uh, what he's learned from that, what some takeaways are that uh, any potential investor um, should uh, should know. So thanks for being with us. Uh, if you'd like to get our newsletter, TomWilsonProperties.com, TomWilsonProperties.com. We have a newsletter that comes out once a week that has uh, economic news that's going on in the nation and how it affects real estate. It's a nice one-minute read to help summarize all that stuff that you want to read but never get around to. This one you can handle. If you have questions or subjects that uh, you'd like to send our way, please do that. I have a report on uh, how to select the best metros for investing. So that's something else you can also uh, um, go to the website and request, and we'd be glad to uh, send that to you. So thanks very much for being with us today. It's always a pleasure having you, and thanks again to Joe and Jen. This is uh, KDOW, 1220 AM, the Wall Street Business Network, and we look forward to having you back next week when Joe Hernandez is with us to talk about the uh, the investor and for long-term uh, rental properties. You've been listening to Real Estate 360 on AM 1220 KDOW. For more information on today's program, visit re360radio.com. That's re360radio.com. AM 1220 KDOW. You did it.